Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to be sensitive to everyone's time today. Um, my name is Faustine Chan. I'm the Business Innovation Manager for BBB. So I've been helping coordinate these webinars that are held um, daily um, each week and each week, um, each day of each week, we have a daily theme. So um, today's Tuesday turnaround. So welcome everyone. We looks like we have a lot of people from across the US joining us today. Um, if you do have questions throughout the webinar on this topic, um, please just submit them in the Q&A option or in the chat option. We will answer those um, accordingly um, at the end as well. So um, this webinar is being recorded. So if you do have to leave or you miss any part of it, you need to review it. It will be posted on events.bbcommunity.org. So um, you can review this webinar in addition to other past recorded webinars and then also sign up for um, further um, webinars that we are holding in the future as well. So for those of you who are dialing in, um, make sure you write that um, website down so you can review the recorded webinar um, in about two, one or two days. It will be posted on that um, website. So events.bbcommunity.org. So we'll go ahead and introduce our speaker today, um, Jamie Prickett. Soranzo Zano. Um, she is a Southern California native, uh, first generation college graduate from San Diego State University. Um, she has dedicated her life to public service and has a special place in her heart for veterans and the disabled community. Prior to the SBA, she worked for public service for the state of California. She also went on to work for the Social Security Administration as a bilingual disability claims specialist helping people apply for federal programs in the San Diego area. Um, she's also been a program executive investigation analyst in the Baltimore, Washington area where she developed the skill to interpret high level messages to the workforce to support the mission. So please welcome our speaker today, Jamie. Hi, thank you. Um, can everyone see me and hear me? Yes? Yes, in the chat box. Okay, uh, as Faustine mentioned, uh, thanks to the special partnership that we have with the Better Business Bureau here in San Diego and Southern California, um, we are able to provide services and the, through the SBA and um, the Better Business Bureau is helping us with this Zoom. So I wanna deliver service and share information effectively um, to reach our visual, to make sure we're, we're using both audio and visual. Um, we prepared a PowerPoint. We're gonna walk through the PowerPoint. I know it's kind of bland to have a PowerPoint, but we wanna make sure that uh, we're delivering all of the information as concise as possible. And there's a lot of information. And as Faustine mentioned, we're gonna have a session at the end so we can take back some questions. And I'm gonna be sure to let everybody know um, where you can find more detailed information. Um, I work in the San Diego district office here in Southern California, uh, but SBA is federal program. So everything I have to say here today is going to apply uh, nationwide. And um, so we're gonna get started and we're gonna walk through the PowerPoint, document your questions in the chat box, and then at the end, we're gonna circle back and take that information and see what we can, what kind of questions we can get answered today and whatever we need to answer tomorrow, we'll work on doing that as well. So, um, Bastine is gonna take us to the first slide of the agenda and I'm gonna let you know about what we're gonna talk about. So, um, deliver service and share information effectively. Uh, we're gonna walk through SBA programs that support small business. So there's four awesome programs that are out there right now, today, that you can take advantage of. Economic Injury Disaster Loan and the Loan Advance, the Paycheck Protection Program, SBA Express Bridge Loans, and SBA Debt Relief, so four programs. Uh, we're all, and as part of this, we are, we're also going to provide you with, with the visual of our small business guidance and loan resources that are available online. So um, we're just going to plug in sba.gov so that everybody can see what the website looks like in case you've never been there. 
and we're going to capture questions. And in addition to delivering service um, and sharing information in a format that everybody can understand, um, what we want to accomplish here today is empower you as a small business owner um, to move forward. What do you do to take that next step? And um, how do you navigate um, uh, these federal programs and all four of the offerings that we have here? Uh, I, I think the information is going to help you out so you can be confident in taking that next step forward, whatever step that may be. Okay, so let's go on to our next slide. So since everybody's, uh, everybody has different levels of information, I'm going to go through, I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm going to go through our four programs. Um, and go from there. So first of all, uh, SBA's disaster declaration makes loans available due to the coronavirus, coronavirus COVID-19. Um, for the economic injury disaster loan, the, the premise behind the disaster loan is uh, to provide relief to businesses to overcome the temporary loss of revenue. So who's eligible? All small business owners in all of the United States, Washington, D.C., and territories are eligible to apply for an economic injury disaster loan in advance, up to $10,000 for the advance. The SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program provides small businesses with working capital loans up to $2 million that can provide vital economic support to small businesses to help overcome the temporary loss of revenue that you're experiencing as a small business owner. The loan advance provides economic re relief to businesses that are currently experiencing a temporary loss of revenue um, due to COVID. Okay, so we're gonna go, go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so SBA working capital loans are different from other SBA loans. Because you are applying directly to the Small Business in Administration, there are no fees to apply. Anyone that, that thinks they may be eligible should apply. Keep in mind, you don't have to take the loan if something changes between when you apply and when you receive approval. So uh, to recap, the loans come directly from the United States Treasury. Uh, we do not go through a bank. We're gonna, um, in order to apply for the economic injury disaster loan, You, um, you're gonna apply online. There's no cost, there's no obligation to take the loan if it's offered, and the maximum unsecured loan amount is $25,000. Okay, so next slide. To be eligible, you need, you need to be a for-profit business or private nonprofit. Most businesses have, have been affected by the disaster and will be eligible. If you are not sure if you are eligible, apply and let the loan officer make the determination. So um, right here, am I eligible to apply? Uh, this includes businesses directly affected by the disaster, businesses that offer services directly related to the businesses in the declaration, that's basically everybody, other businesses indirectly related to the industry that are likely to be harmed by losses in their, computer, in their community. Okay, so I can see the slide. I saw that, I saw that question come over. Okay, next slide. It looks like we can all see. Okay, so small business eligibility. What kinds of small businesses can apply? Example of eligible industries include, but are not limited to the following. Restaurants, retailers, manufacturers, sports vendors, owners of rental property, souvenir shops, travel agencies, hotels, recreational facilities, wholesalers, 
um, basically all types of small businesses. Um, loan officers are gonna review each loan package on a case by pay case basis to make decisions. Um, and if you're, if you're concerned as to whether or not you are a small business, there is a link on sba.gov where you can click on this link, go in there and it'll ask you some questions about uh, the size of your business. Uh, what we tell everybody, if you think you're a small business, apply. And if you have any questions, I've had a couple people that have more than 500 um, employees and I've sent them to the to this website where they could um, look at the, the size standards on sba.gov. Okay, great, next slide. Okay, so in addition to, to small business, nonprofits may apply for the economic injury disaster loan. And some of the nonprofits include nursing homes, food kitchens, museums. Um, nonprofit status can be based on either state or federal tax law. The disaster center is encouraging any private nonprofit to apply and again, let the loan officer make the determination on eligibility. So if you're a nonprofit or a small business, uh, you wanna make sure you submit your application for the economic injury disaster loan. Okay, next slide. And then we're gonna talk about um, some obvious ineligible entities. Um, okay, so at this point, uh, agricultural enterprises. So if the primary activity of the business um, includes growing, feeding, or watering, um, your business is probably an agri agricultural enterprise and currently not eligible um, except for a very specific agricultural agriculture aquaponics. Um, so agriculture, Gambling and speculative real estate businesses are, are ineligible. Um, if there's any question as to whether or not you fall into one of those categories, uh, you definitely want to submit an application and, and see, uh, see if you are eligible. Let the loan officer make that determination again. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and we're going to talk about um, some of the terms for the SBA economic injury disaster loan. So uh, how much can you borrow? Uh, up to 2 million at 3.75% for the small business. 2.75 depending on the entity for a term of up to uh, up to 30 years. So if you're a small business, you're looking at a, a interest rate of 3.75. And if you're a nonprofit, you're looking at a, an interest rate at 2.75. And again, the terms up to 30 years. Okay, so the el eligibility for these loans are working capital loans. They're based on the size. And what can you use the loans, the loan funds for? Fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, other bills that could have been paid had the disaster not occurred. The loans are not intended to replace lost sales or profits or for expansion. So these are disaster loans um, to replace loss of revenue based on the coronavirus. There's no repayment penalties. And um, another awesome feature is there's a 12 month deferment during which time you will not be required to make payments, but interest will be occur incurring. Okay, so we're going to go to the next slide and we're going to talk about um, the criteria for loan approval. So some of the things that they're going to look at, the SBA is going to pull a, a credit report, but don't get hung up, but we're not going to get hung up on your credit score. They are going to be pulling a credit report. The loan officer will be looking at credit history as well as repayment ability. Collateral will be required for loans over $25,000 but generally lack of collateral will not be the sole reason for declining a borrower. 
If your financial statements show available collateral, the SBA may ask you to pledge it. Generally, the SBA looks first to real estate and then to other business assets as to collateral. So for the economic injury disaster loan, collateral, if you have it, is evaluated as part of the loan. And that's gonna be different when we get to some of our other loans that we're gonna talk about. Okay, next slide. So, so now uh, you have some background on the economic injury disaster loan. And so you're, so you're thinking, well, if I haven't already applied, how am I gonna do that? So uh, this link is gonna be available to you. And then also it's on sba.gov. And when you click on it, when you go into sba.gov or you click on this link that we're going to provide you with, it's going to shoot you directly to the online portal to submit an application electronically. Um, and on the next screen, I'm going to show you what the application looks like. There we go. Updated streamlined process. Um, so the updated streamlined process is going to capture this loan as data, so they'll be able to process it as quickly as possible. Um, they estimate, and I've, I've done a couple of them, it, it should take less than two hours. Um, the one that I, that I assisted with took less than an hour. Um, you're going to need to certify some information, including um, business information, business owner information, additional supporting information may be necessary and requested as needed by your loan officer. We're gonna go through some of the questions. I saw that in the chat box, one of the questions was, one of the questions was, what do the questions look like? And on the next slide, um, Faustine is gonna, the next couple slides, I've, I've kind of uh, captured what our screens are gonna look like when you're actually going in there. So on the first screen, you're gonna have to figure out, well, what kind of, you know, Am I eligible? So there's going to be a whole list of questions here, and um, it's going to determine your eligibility. So you're going to uh, check all those that apply. And then on the next screen, you're going to need to verify certain items to ensure your eligibility. So fail. So here, here's where I want to make sure we're clear here. Um, failure to check all the listed items will make the applicant ineligible. So the screen that we had before, that's going to isolate, hey, what kind of business am I? And then this second, this second screen right here, um, you need to check all of these items off. Uh, failure to check all listed items will, will make your application ineligible. So these are required fields. You want to make sure that you complete them. So. If you can't answer the one of the, if you can't check, so bottom line, if you can't check one of these, so say for say for example, um, say for example, I'm in the business of lobbying, then you're not going to be eligible. So um, for the most part, all these you take a look at these, figure out if it applies to your small business, and make sure you've checked them all. Okay, so we're going to go to the next app, the next slide, and we're going to talk about some tips to submitting your application. Okay, so you want to make sure, and the reason why we're providing this training is we, we want to give you the heads up, hey, you're going to need to get some information together, and then, and then have this information ready, so before you enter into the application, you have some background and, and you're ready to con continue forward. So the biggest reason for delays in processing is due to missing information. So make sure that you have everything you need. Um, you want to get your 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 taxes from last year. Um, you want to if you don't if you don't already know it. You want to know ownership. Who's got ownership of the business? Um, you want to have all that basic information that you should have um, readily available and um, make sure the application is as complete and accurate. You can request to have your uh, loan increased after it's submitted. Um, and it's also important to request reconsideration for denial as quickly as possible. And then you'll have multiple options if your application is denied to request reconsideration. Okay, so we're gonna go next slide. 
Okay, so now we're going to break from the economic injury disaster loan and we're going to go to the Paycheck Protection Program. Paycheck Protection Program. Okay, so who's eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program? Um, small businesses with less than 500 employees. Um, and, and I say that and then I'm going to turn around and contradict what I just said. Certain industries could have more than 500 employees, um, including sole proprietorships, independent contractors, and self-employed, and the and self-employed. So um, again, if you're if you're not sure, say you have 520 employees, what you need to do is take a look at SBA.gov, go through that business size standards, and figure out what kind of business you are and see if there's an exception for uh, more than 500 employees. So um, I added this bullet in there, hospitality and food industry could also be eligible at the store and location level if the store employs less than 500 workers. So what this means is each store location could be eligible. So if you are in the food industry or hospitality, um, you want to keep that into consideration as well. And then our next question, so where am I going to apply? I, I want to apply for a Paycheck Protection Program. Where do I go? So unlike the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, you're going to go to an SBA approved bank. Um, so an existing 7A lender or through your financial institution. So what we tell people is go to your current bank that you bank with. Um, where you already have a business banking relationship, um, go online or have a conversation on the telephone and see if they are processing Paycheck Protection Program applications. Um, the Paycheck Protection Program became available April 3rd, and then it became available for independent contractors and self-employed on April 10th that rolled out on April 10th so just last week okay so uh, what can you use the loan for so pay paycheck protection program um, is a loan for payroll and approved operating expenses now what is it's it's designed to incentivize companies to keep employees on staff, to keep jobs, to keep workers employed. And we're gonna go to the next slide. Okay, so the loan amount. The loan amount, it, it seems very complicated, but on the surface, the calculation is two and a half times av average monthly payroll for the prior 12 months. So I'm going to throw out a scenario. So say for 2019, um, I had 12 months of payroll. Uh, so you're going to take an average monthly payroll for one, of the average of the 12 months, and then take that month, multiply it by 2.5. Um, so the maturity for the Paycheck Protection Program is two years. And the interest rate on here is incorrect. So the interest rate is currently at 1%, not, not 0.5, it's currently at 1%. Uh, deferred loan payment. So uh, say I apply for a paycheck protection program, there's a deferment period where I wouldn't have to start paying back any sort of loan payments until six months. And I believe that's six months after you've been awarded and received the uh, loan. Um, so we discussed about economic injury disaster loan that collateral, if it was available, was required. Um, on the Paycheck Protection Program, um, collateral or personal guarantees are not required. So it differs from the economic injury disaster loan. Um, so this is another awesome feature, fees. So the United States government nor lenders will charge small businesses any fees to process these loans. So if you um, if you come across that scenario, uh, make sure you're taking a closer look at that. So uh, no fees. Now they could potentially be, uh, 
be charging a service fee, but not a fee to process the loan, okay? Now, uh, so loan forgiveness. So much like the economic injury disaster loan, there's a feature um, called loan forgiveness. Um, it's based on the employer maintaining or quickly rehiring employees and maintaining salary levels. So I know we had one question that came in about, I'm not able to keep my employees on salary and what, what happens if I uh, rehire them? So uh, so here you go, loan forgiveness. So you wanna think about um, the premise is keeping people employed, keeping them on payroll, that's what the loan's designed to do. Um, so when you're talking forgiveness, you wanna think about that. So forgiveness will be reduced if full-time headcount declines or if salaries and wages de decrease. So make a long story, story short, say I get a loan for Paycheck Protection Program, um, part of the requirements for the forgiveness piece is to keep 75% or more of my employees on staff if I'm, if I'm, if I'm trying to get the loan forgived. Uh, if you're not looking for loan forgiveness, then that, that feature isn't going to apply. But um, so say I have a a small hair salon and I have 10 employees and I keep them all on staff, then I could potentially be um, eligible for this loan forgiveness process. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. You guys have awesome questions, by the way. Okay, so here's the next one. The, uh, so we're moving on. We went from economic injury disaster loan. We talked about some paycheck protection program loan information. And now we're switching gears to the third, third, third type of loan here. And um, that's called the SBA Express Bridge Loan. Okay. So uh, what is a SBA Express Bridge Loan? So uh, small businesses located in communities impacted by presidential disasters that are adversely affected by COVID-19. So um, if your business is adversely affected by the coronavirus, you could potentially be eligible for an SBA Express Bridge Loan. So where do I go for the Express Bridge Loan? So we learned for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, you're gonna apply online. And we learned for the Paycheck Protection Program that you're gonna to go to a, a lender and take your application there. And that lender is gonna process it. So for the SBA Express Bridge Loan, again, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna to go to our uh, SBA approved lenders and, um, so when I say SBA approved lenders, so I'm gonna, let me give you a scenario. So I'm a small business and I bank at a bank and um, that bank happens to be an SBA approved lender. Say I have another SBA loan, but say I need an SBA loan today. So I can ask for an SBA express bridge loan up to $25,000 at my approved bank. So when can you do it? You can do it right now. It's, it's happening right now. Um, and then the loan proceeds, the purpose of the loan is to support the sur survival or the reopening of the small business. Uh, again, we mentioned $25,000 and the interest rate is a maximum of 6.5 over the prime rate. And that was, uh, that was as of, last week when I put this PowerPoint together. So um, you're gonna have to check with your lender to see see what the prime rate is and, and if there's any movement on that. Um, the term of the loan is for seven years. So we learned that uh, we have 30 years on the economic injury disaster loan. And here for the SBA Express Bridge Loan, the term is seven years. Um, so say I want to ask for two uh, bridge loans. There's only one express bridge loan um, 
per disaster. So um, just one. So it would be up to $25,000 just for that one time per this coronavirus disaster. Now, if there's an, another disaster, then that's a different story. And I think we had a, a tornadoes that went through um, Mississippi and um, Louisiana. So that would be an example of another disaster. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the next page. Okay, so now we're on the fourth option. So SBA has four financing options available. So this option is SBA debt relief and SBA Small Business Administration is providing a financial reprieve to small businesses during the coronavirus. So say I already have an existing SBA loan. Um, special processing and deferments are in place. So say I have an SBA loan and I've had it for a few years and now this is happening. Um, I could potentially be eligible for a deferment, meaning I will not have to pay back um, the loan while it's in deferment. Interest I'm sure is, is still accruing. Um, but that would be an example of an SBA debt relief option. So that's our fourth offering that I went through today. And then on the next slide, we're going to talk about assistance from resource partners. So um, Faustine mentioned in my bio about uh, my experience with helping people to apply for federal programs. So I know often applying for loans and federal programs and benefits um, can seem overwhelming. So if you find yourself in that position, you are not alone. There are resource partners that are out there to help you. Um, so what, what do I mean by resource partners? So resource partners are organizations that are partially funded by the United States Small Business Administration. They offer free business counseling and low cost workshops to entrepreneurs. So um, that's, that's their mission and they do an excellent job. So this slide has San Diego centric SBA resource partners. Every community will have resource partners and all of that information is available online. So I noticed there were some people online from Chicago and some from Arizona and some from Idlewild, California. So all of you on the phone will have resource partners. So small business development centers, um, oftentimes there'll be a women's business center in, in that area, also a SCORE, Service Corps of Retired Executive chapters throughout the nation. Um, and uh, of course, our, uh, for our veterans that are entrepreneurs and our uh, military connected family members, which we have a lot of in San Diego County, um, we have our Veterans Business Outreach Centers that are located across the nation as well. So if I find myself not able to take the next step on completing an application, I can um, get on sba.gov and find my nearest resource partner and give them a call. When we're not in corona disaster mode, you could actually make an appointment and sit down with a business counselor and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. And I want everybody to remember that because as we move forward with recovery, the small business development centers um, are gonna be vital to, um, all these resource partners are gonna be able to help us to take the next step as to um, figuring out what that looks like in the next stage. So I know we're covering disaster recovery uh, opportunities right now, but they are there to help your business start, grow, expand, market, um, everything. You need a business plan, you can go to them. If you have questions on um, what are you gonna do for uh, getting some new customers, um, 
go to the go to the resource partners. There's lots of them in San Diego. We have over 10 offices dedicated um, in our San Diego and Imperial County network uh, of offices that are there to help people. And so leverage them. They're doing an excellent job, and we could not do our mission without them. And then we're going to go to the next slide. OK, so um, sign up for uh, updates. So we have a newsletter. So when you get on SBA.gov, you're going to see no matter where you're at, in, for example, Chicago and Phoenix and San Diego, you're going to have a district office that's in a region to service you. Um, so this is information on how to join the newsletter for San Diego District Office, which services Southern California, uh, San Diego, Imperial County, all the way up to Arizona and Mexico and Riverside County. So this is gonna be uh, SBA San Diego District Office, but uh, don't worry, everybody has a district office Hey, Jamie, I think you just muted yourself. Okay, just hang on everyone. I know everyone is on the call wondering what happened. Um, I think she's having some technical difficulties. So just give her a moment. Um, let me see if we can get her back online here. Oh, looks like she just um, lost her internet connection. Um, let me give her a minute to log back in. So if everyone can just hang on tight, we'll give her um, a minute to just log back in. Um, she probably had some internet connection issues. I just lost her. So um, just hang on tight, everyone. Okay, so uh, have no idea what happened, but uh, we're gonna truck on. Okay, so uh, joining the newsletter. So I don't know exactly where I got lost. So I'm gonna back up here. So every office, every San Diego, for example, the San Diego district office, we have a newsletter. And um, everybody can join the SBA's district office newsletter. So please do that. The, the reason for the newsletter is it's gonna let you know about what the Small Business Administration is doing in your community, how we're serving you, and it's gonna provide you with updated information. And since all of these programs are new, um, it's gonna be the fastest way to get information about what's happening with the EIDL loan, what's happening with paycheck protection, um, everything that's happening that's going on. If there's a webinar, another webinar, um, sponsored by the district office, then you'll be able to have that information and join it. And so it really is a terrific uh, newsletter to, to join. And so I encourage everybody to figure out where their district office is and join their newsletter. This is uh, San Diego centric information, um, but get on sba.gov and plug in your location, whether it's San Diego, Phoenix, Chicago and you'll come to your district office web page and on that web page it's going to have information about how to uh, join the newsletter it's really easy all you have to do is plug in your email address okay so I think we're going to be yeah one more okay so uh, there's a group of people that have already applied for the economic injury disaster loan so if you applied for the economic injury disaster loan um, and you want to check the status of your pending application, what you're going to do is you're going to take this 1-800 number 659-2955 
And um, if you need to check the status, that would be the number to call. If, and I wanna say something else. If you have, uh, do we have, I'm gonna ask a question. Do we have anybody that applied for the economic injury disaster loan um, before March 30th? Okay, so terrific. Um, if you've applied before March 30th, there is a possibility that your application is not protecting you for the economic, for the loan advance. So if you're in that situation, um, go ahead and get online and, okay, Haley, it looks like, yes, we had to reapply. And that's why I'm mentioning this. So if you, what they did is they offered the loan advance after the CARES Act was signed on the 27th. So I wanna make sure that, I wanna make sure that I'm relaying information. I know it's difficult because you're gonna have to reapply, but I would rather have you have the information to reapply so that you get protected for that loan advance feature. Um, and so bottom line, if you do not know whether or not you have an application in for the economic injury disaster loan advance and you're interested in that, um, I would A, uh, call that 1-800 number, check on the status, and B, make sure that you apply online for that. And that, that would just be the screens that we just went through on sba.gov. And um, okay, so online application, that's the link. Um, Somebody had a question about paper applications. So it's best to apply online because then your, your application is processed using data. So um, there is a, a paper process. If you have to have a paper application, um, if, if you're not comfortable with applying online, my recommendation would be to go to a resource partner so that they could help you um, before you submit a paper application. And um, if you absolutely have to, of course you can. And then B, I just want to throw out there, if somebody needs a reasonable accommodation, of course, um, you would need to contact your, your local district office. But first I would uh, reach out to a resource partner and say, hey, I need some assistance with completing my application and, and start there. And then for pending economic injury disaster loan statuses, call that 1-800 number. And for the Paycheck Protection Program, you're actually gonna call the lender where you submitted your application. And um, so that's also, so prior to, prior to starting this, uh, the Better Business Bureau captured some questions. And uh, I think we could read those questions off real quick and um, Go from there and then we'll answer as many questions as we can. And we might have to get back on some of those questions, get back with everybody. Um, Cause I know some of them are pretty in depth. Okay, we'll go ahead and um, start with the Q and A um, that people have submitted. And then um, we'll get back to the ones that um, I think we submitted. So. Um, so if it's already been answered in the webinar, just let me know, because um, we went over a lot of information today, Jamie. Um, John asks, um, what are the terms to apply for the EIDL loan? Okay, so the terms to apply, meaning you want to, um, you're interested in, in 30 years or how you do it, a little more information, John. Um, he also has a follow-up question. Um, what are the terms of the 10K and below loans? Okay, so yeah, let's go back to economic injury disaster loans real quick. Okay, so uh, 30 year up to a 30-year term, uh, 10 th up to a $10,000 advance. Um, for working capital up to $2 million. 
So the advance potentially could be up to $10,000, um, 30 years. If it's a small business, it sounds like it's a small business, 3.75 and um, no cost to apply. Uh, does that answer, is, is that good, John? You apply online. Um, hang on, John. We see John raising his hand. Hang on one second and we'll get to you. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, John, so you can talk online. Oh, you need to unmute yourself, John. Is your microphone on? Because I just turned you to unmute yourself, but I don't see your microphone on. Okay, um, looks like we can't hear you, John. So if you wanna just type them, um, your follow-up questions and your comments in the chat option, we can do that. I don't see your microphone turning on. So um, we'll go ahead and answer the next question here. Um, Christian asked, I've submitted approximately two to three weeks ago. How do I see that in terms of it being processed? Okay, so what I would do is, so that is prior to the 30th, correct? Two to three weeks ago. Yeah, well, I don't know, we're close. So what I would do is if you have not applied online, I would submit an online application and then B, um, the 1-800 number, that number that's up there right now, 1-800-659-2955 is the number to call to check on the current status of your pending application. Now, if you think you have not submitted it for the economic injury disaster loan advance, which is up to $10,000, and I know somebody did clarify um, $1,000 per um, $1,000 per employee or per owner. Um, yes, I would make sure the most important thing to do is to make sure that you have your application submitted. So two things, you can uh, reapply online, make sure you're eligible for that loan advance, and then B, you can also uh, call that 1-800 number. So you wanna find out what the status is of your application. Okay, great. Um, we have Kurt who asked for the EIDL, nonprofits don't have owners. Do they need to provide personal guarantees and who would do that? Okay, so on the SBA, so yes, there's special processing for the nonprofits. So when you get into the economic injury disaster loan, the questions, if you're a nonprofit versus a small business, are gonna lead you down different paths. Okay, so we have um, a question from Christian um, PPP. Um, I've also submitted three weeks ago, my business banker at Chase told me on this past Saturday that I was in the queue. How do I monitor my application aside from reaching my banker? Okay, so that business banking relationship is really important. Um, you would wanna follow up with, with that bank. And uh, what I've heard some people do is when they have a relationship with a, a person there, person at the bank, they follow up with that person. So um, if you have a contact at that bank, I would say, hey, I applied for the Paycheck Protection Program. I wanna check the status. I wanna make sure it's getting processed. Can you tell me uh, what stage it's at so that I can um, move forward? So, so that's the best information I could offer on the Paycheck Protection uh, Program. Great, so we have Cynthia who writes, um, what are examples of approved expenses? Okay, are we talking economic injury disaster loan or are we talking Paycheck Protection Program? So that was Cynthia. If you want to just type it in the chat option, um, we can answer that question. Um, 
I'll just answer it. So for a Paycheck Protection Program, you're looking at, at payroll, right? Because the premise of the Paycheck Protection Program is to keep people working. Um, so payroll is an expense. Um, uh, rent as well. Um, I think we went through, let me find the specifics on EIDL. Uh, okay, so for EIDL, we're looking at fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, other bills that could have been paid had the disaster not occurred. And then we have a question from um, Gary. I have applied and have a confirmation number dated April 1st for the EIDL loan. I have not heard from a loan officer. What is the wait time to hear from an SB loan officer? And is there a way to check the status of my application? So April 1st, um, what I would do for an April 1st, again, you're always, open to call that 1-800 number and ask them, uh, hey, did you receive my application? I wanna make sure you have it. I applied on April 1st. I would, I would say, uh, hang tight. It's probably um, still processing, but um, when you're a small business and it's your application and you're going through this very difficult time with corona, um, you wanna know the status. So. Uh, call that 1-800 number, they're available, and, and I, would, I would open it up with, hey, I applied April 1st, uh, I, I, I want to make sure you re received it, you should have a confirmation number, so you should know that whether or not it was received, but you just um, ask for a status update as to where we are, you have the right to do that, that's why that number's there, to provide you with customer service. Um, I would give it a little bit more time if just because I know there's so many applications that are being processed. Um, but when you're ready, that's the number to, the, to call the 1-800-659-2955. And, and the key words are, I'd like to check the status of my application that I submitted on April 1st. I wanna make sure you have everything and figure out where I need to be. Great, and then we have um, Bianca that writes, um, I have no employees, um, but I use subcontractors sub and pay them a 1099. Would I still qualify for any of these loans? Okay, so you can qualify on behalf of yourself. So if you're uh, an independent contractor or a sole proprietor, you can qualify for, yes, you can qualify for these loans. Um, Christian writes, are the forgiveness loans, um, can they be full-time employees or can they be part-time as well? Okay, so I don't, I'm not a loan officer, so I don't want to get into, you know, full-time employees and FTEs and part-time employees, um, because I'm not going to have the information to provide to you. So I want to make sure if I'm providing it to you that it's accurate. I don't know how that works. So what I would say um, is uh, one of the things that we're going to cover today is taking a look at some of the questions and answers that are available. And the Better Business Bureau is going to send out the link. So there are um, some Q&A that's out there. I don't know if this is answered on the Q&A, but there's 28 questions um, that are already prepared. It is um, on the U.S. Treasury website, United States Treasury, um, in regards to the Paycheck Protection Program loans. And you can query it, see if that question's on there. I'm not exactly sure. So that would be a question. Um, for the lender. Okay, great. Um, so we also have John asking, what are the terms for repaying a 10K or below loan? Was that included in the slides, Jamie? Okay, so uh, economic injury disaster loan up to 30 years. And then the 
Paycheck Protection Program. Um, let me let me back up. Economic Injury Disaster Loan, 30 years. The Express Loan, um, it looks like a maximum term of seven years. And yeah, I'm positive that that information is on the Paycheck Protection Program. Let me um, take a look at the slide. Two years with a fixed interest rate of 1%. So 30 on the EIDL loans, two on Paycheck Protection Program, and um, up to seven on the Express Bridge loans. So far, that's what we have right now, today. Everything, things can change. Um, someone, Armando writes, if they have to reapply since they already applied before March 30th, would they fall further back in line because they have to reapply? Um, so what I understand is the applications are being processed as first in, first out. So if you need to apply for the loan advance, then definitely take the opportunity to get online and apply for that. As to how your applications are associated with each other, um, that's part of the business process. And, and since I'm not a loan officer and I don't work in the Office of Disaster, I can't, I can't answer how that process is working. Okay, we have a question from Marcy. Um, She's heard that the PPP and the EIDL loan are almost out of money already. Um, do you think the awards are first come first served or will there be another criteria to help award more money later? Um, the most important thing, I think I mentioned this before, the most important thing is to submit your application. So, um, don't let distractions about what is or is not available um, hinder your main objective to submit an application. So if I'm thinking I'm going to apply for economic injury disaster loan or the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, I would get online tonight and apply for that economic injury disaster loan and follow up with the Paycheck Protection Program. We don't, we, I can't tell you what's gonna happen in, in the future. I have no idea. So, but don't let the, don't let that hinder your process. Your objective is to, uh, you're a small business owner. Uh, the CARES Act is providing these benefits and these programs for you. And it's up to you to take charge and take the next step forward and seize the opportunities. Great, so we have time for one more question. So if you did type a question in our Q&A or our chat and we didn't get to it, um, we do have it recorded. So um, we will reach out to Jamie and she can reach out to the right people. If she doesn't have the answer to answer those and we'll email those out. Um, so one final question comes from Kurt. Um, do nonprofits have to provide personal guarantees? Kurt, let me take that question back because I don't want to, it's not coming to mind right now. I know I've already, I've already read that, um, and for the so so let's get clarification on that because the it it depends whether or not it's EIDL or Paycheck Protection. So um, let me look into that and respond to you. So we provide you with the uh, correct answer. I want to say yes, but I want to make sure that uh, we follow up with accurate information on that. So we'll take that one back. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, looks like we're out of time. So um, if you do have additional questions or if the questions we didn't get to answer, we will email those out with the answers. Um, again, this webinar is recorded. So if you do need to review it again, um, please go to events.bbcommunity.org. Um, thank you so much, Jamie, for taking time out of your day um, just to thank share you. with us all this information. We really, really appreciate it. And we appreciate the partnership that BBB has with SBA. Um, thank everyone else for attending um, and please stay safe out there.